The term ecofeminism is used to describe a feminist approach to understanding ecology. Ecofeminist thinkers draw on the concept of gender to theorize on the relationship between humans and the natural world. The term was coined by the French writer Françoise Dobon in her book Le Féminisme au la mort Today, there are many interpretations of ecofeminism and how it might be applied to social thought, including, ecofeminist art, ecofeminist theory, social justice and political philosophy, religion, contemporary feminism and poetry. As there are several different types of feminism and different beliefs held by feminists, there are different versions of ecofeminism. Ecofeminism is widely referred to as the third wave of feminism, it adds to the former feminist theory that an environmental perspective is a necessary part of feminism. Ecofeminism uses the parallels between the oppression of nature and the oppression of women as a way to highlight the idea that both must be understood in order to properly recognize how they are connected. These parallels include but are not limited to seeing women and nature as property, seeing men as the curators of culture and women as the curators of nature, and how men dominate women and humans dominate nature. Charlene Spretnik has offered one way of categorizing ecofeminist work, one, through the study of political theory as well as history, two, through the belief and study of nature-based religions, three, through environmentalism. Anti-oppression According to Françoise Dobon in her book Le Féminisme au la mort 1974, ecofeminism relates the oppression and domination of all subordinate groups women, people of color, children, the poor to the oppression and domination of nature animals, land, water, air, etc. In the book, the author argues that oppression, domination, exploitation, and colonization from the Western patriarchal society has directly caused irreversible environmental damage. Françoise Dobon was an activist and organizer, and her writing encouraged the eradication of all social injustice, not just injustice against women and the environment. This tradition includes a number of influential texts including, Women and Nature Susan Griffin 1978, The Death of Nature Carolyn Merchant 1980 and GYN, Ecology Mary Daly 1978. These texts helped to propel the association between domination by man on women and the domination of culture on nature. From these texts feminist activism of the 1980s linked ideas of ecology and the environment. For example, conferences for women devoted to living on the earth and protests against nuclear testing and other militarism that oppresses femininity. Writing in this circle discussed ecofeminism drawing from Green Party politics, peace movements, and direct action movements. Modern ecofeminism, or feminist eco criticism, eschews such essentialism and instead focuses more on intersectional questions, such as how the nature culture split enables the oppression of female and non human bodies. It is also an activist and academic movement that sees critical connections between the exploitation of nature and the domination over women, both caused by men. Topic. Gendering nature One ecofeminist theory is that capitalist values reflect paternalistic and gendered values. In this interpretation effects of capitalism has led to a harmful split between nature and culture. In the 1970s, early ecofeminists discussed that the split can only be healed by the feminine instinct for nurture and holistic knowledge of nature's processes. Several feminists make the distinction that it is not because women are female or feminine that they relate to nature, but because of their similar states of oppression by the same male dominant forces. The marginalization is evident in the gendered language used to describe nature and the animalized language used to describe women. Some discourses link women specifically to the environment because of their traditional social role as a nurturer and caregiver. Ecofeminists following in this line of thought believe that these connections are illustrated through the coherence of socially labeled values associated with femininity such as nurturing, which are present both among women and in nature. Vandana Shiva says that women have a special connection to the environment through their daily interactions and this connection has been ignored. She says that women in subsistence economies who produce wealth in partnership with nature, have been experts in their own right of holistic and ecological knowledge of nature's processes." She makes the point that, 
These alternative modes of knowing, which are oriented to the social benefits and sustenance needs are not recognized by the capitalist reductionist paradigm, because it fails to perceive the interconnectedness of nature, or the connection of women's lives, work and knowledge with the creation of wealth 23. Shiva blames this failure on the West's patriarchy, and the patriarchal idea of what development is. According to Shiva, patriarchy has labeled women, nature, and other groups not growing the economy as unproductive. Topic. An ecofeminist framework In the 1993 essay entitled, Ecofeminism, Toward Global Justice and Planetary Health, authors Greta Gard and Lori Gruen outline what they call the ecofeminist framework. The essay provides a wealth of data and statistics in addition to laying out the theoretical aspects of the ecofeminist critique. The framework described is intended to establish ways of viewing and understanding our current global situation so that we are better able to understand how we arrived at this point and what may be done to ameliorate the ills. Gard and Gruen argue that there are four sides to this framework. The mechanistic materialist model of the universe that resulted from the scientific revolution and the subsequent reduction of all things into mere resources to be optimized, dead inert matter to be used. The rise of patriarchal religions and their establishment of gender hierarchies along with their denial of immanent divinity. Self and other dualisms and the inherent power and domination ethic it entails. Capitalism and its intrinsic need for the exploitation, destruction and instrumentalization of animals, earth and people for the sole purpose of creating wealth, they hold that these four factors have brought us to what ecofeminists see as a separation between nature and culture. That is the root source of our planetary ills. <laughs> Concepts <laughs> Modern science and ecofeminism In Ecofeminism 1993, authors Vandana Shiva, Maria Mize and Evan Bondi ponder modern science and its acceptance as a universal and value-free system. Instead, they view the dominant stream of modern science as a projection of Western men's values. The privilege of determining what is considered scientific knowledge has been controlled by men, and for the most part of history restricted to men. Bondi and Miles list examples including the medicalization of childbirth and the industrialization of plant reproduction. Bondi argues that the medicalization of childbirth has marginalized midwife knowledge and changed the natural process of childbirth into a procedure dependent on specialized technologies and appropriated expertise. A common claim within ecofeminist literature is that patriarchal structures justify their dominance through binary opposition, these include but are not limited to, heaven, earth, mind, body, male, female, human, animal, spirit, matter, culture, nature and white, non-white. Oppression is reinforced by assuming truth in these binaries and instilling them as marvelous to behold through religious and scientific constructs. Topic. Vegetarian ecofeminism. The application of ecofeminism to animal rights has established vegetarian ecofeminism, which asserts that, "...omitting the oppression of animals from feminist and ecofeminist analyses, is inconsistent with the activist and philosophical foundations of both feminism as a movement to end all forms of oppression, and ecofeminism." It puts into practice, "...the personal is political," for it believes that, Meat eating is a form of patriarchal domination, that suggests a link between male violence and a meat based diet. Vegetarian ecofeminism combines sympathy with the analysis of culture and politics to refine a system of ethics and action. Materialist ecofeminism Ecofeminism as materialist is another common theme in ecofeminism. A materialist view connects some institutions such as labor, power and property as the source of domination over women and nature. There are connections made between these subjects because similarly there are varying values in production and reproduction. Topic. Spiritual ecofeminism Spiritual ecofeminism is another branch of ecofeminism, and is popular among ecofeminist authors such as Starhawk, Rianne Eisler, Carol J. Adams, and more. 
Starhawk calls this an Earth-based spirituality, which recognizes that the Earth is alive, that we are interconnected, as well as a community. Spiritual ecofeminism is not linked to one specific religion, but is centered around values of caring, compassion, and non-violence. Often, ecofeminists refer to more ancient traditions, such as the worship of Gaia, the goddess of nature and spirituality also known as Mother Earth, Buddhism, Buddhism and feminism simultaneously gained momentum in America during the 1960s. Some of the parallels between these movements include their experiential epistemology, the intersection of the constrained mind, intersectionality and connection, using emotional energy as a coping mechanism, relational ethics, and a communal mindset and lifestyle. Both Buddhist and ecofeminist practitioners viewed nature as a pathway to enlightenment and as a source of many jumping off points for introspection and deeper thought about the relationship of nature and humans. Judaism Jewish ideology emphasizes leaving the earth as it was found or in better condition than it was found in. This concept is also promoted through ecofeminist theories and movements. Both Judaism and ecofeminism do not always present as social justice movements, but they often contribute ideals and motivations for social change. Social justice is an important part of Judaism, and many practitioners see social justice as a form of spirituality, and some feel this form of spirituality through environmental and feminist movements. Hinduism In Hinduism, the Ganges River is personified by the goddess Ganga. She is a paradoxical deity, as she is supposed to be independent yet guarded, pure yet polluted. Ganga is referred to as a deity to be both subjugated and protected. The underlying tone of the passages is patriarchal despite being reverent. The pollution or purity of the Ganges River is a reflection on Ganga, which represents the relationship between spirituality and nature. Hinduism emphasizes that all lives are connected and indistinguishable. In this context, every life, be it human or animal, is important. Topic. Environmental movements Women participated in the environmental movements, specifically preservation and conservation beginning in the late 19th century and continuing into the early 20th century. Topic. Movements of the 1970s In northern India in 1973, women took part in the Chipko movement to protect forests from deforestation. Nonviolent protest tactics were used to occupy trees so that loggers could not cut them down. In Kenya in 1977, the Green Belt movement was initiated by Professor Wangari Mathai, environmental and political activist, and is ongoing today. It is rural tree planting program led by women, which Mathai designed to help prevent desertification in the area. The program created a green belt of at least 1,000 trees around villages, and gives participants the ability to take charge in their communities. In later years, the Green Belt Movement was an advocate for informing and empowering citizens through seminars for civic and environmental education, as well as holding national leaders accountable for their actions and instilling agency in citizens. In 1978 in New York, mother and environmentalist Lois Gibbs led her community in protest after discovering that their entire neighborhood, Love Canal, was built on top of a toxic dump site. The toxins in the ground were causing illness among children and reproductive issues among women, as well as birth defects in babies born to pregnant women exposed to the toxins. The Love Canal movement eventually led to the evacuation and relocation of nearly 800 families by the federal government. In 1980 and 1981, members of such a conference organized a peaceful protest at the Pentagon. Women stood, hand in hand, demanding equal rights including social, economic, and reproductive rights as well as an end to militaristic actions taken by the government and exploitation of the community people and the environment. This movement is known as the Women's Pentagon Actions. In 1985, the Aquesan Mother's Milk Project was launched by Katsi Cook. This study was funded by the government, and investigated how the higher level of contaminants in water near the Mohawk Reservation impacted babies. It revealed that through breast milk, Mohawk children were being exposed to 200% more toxins than children not on the reservation. Toxins contaminate water all over the world, but to do environmental racism, certain subversive groups are exposed to a much higher amount. The Greening of Harlem Coalition is another example of an ecofeminist movement. In 1989, Bernadette Cossart founded the coalition, which is responsible for many urban gardens around Harlem. Kazart's goal is to turn vacant lots into community gardens. 
This is economically beneficial, and also provides a way for very urban communities to be in touch with nature and each other. The majority of people interested in this project as noted in 1990 were women. Through these gardens, they were able to participate in and become leaders of their communities. Urban greening exists in other places as well. Beginning in 1994, a group of African American women in Detroit have developed city gardens, and call themselves the Gardening Angels. Similar garden movements have been occurring globally. The development of vegetarian ecofeminism can be traced to the mid 80s and 90s, where it first appeared in writing. However, the roots of a vegetarian ecofeminist view can be traced back further by looking at sympathy for non humans and counterculture movements of the 1960s and 1970s. At the culmination of the decade ecofeminism had spread to both coasts and articulated an intersectional analysis of women and the environment. Eventually, challenging ideas of environmental classism and racism, resisting toxic dumping and other threats to the impoverished, in the 1980s and 1990s some began to see the advancing theories in ecofeminism as essentialist. Through analysis done by post-structural and third-wave feminists it was argued that ecofeminism equated women with nature. This dichotomy is dangerous because it groups all women into one category and enforces the very societal norms that feminism is trying to break. Out of this critique rose the anti-essentialist argument. Ecofeminist and author Noel Sturgeon says in an interview that what anti-essentialists are critiquing is a strategy used to mobilize large and diverse groups of both theorists and activists. 1990s present Coming out of the 90s, ecofeminism met a lot of criticism from anti-essentialist feminism, which heavily critiqued what they viewed as essentialism. The essentialist view saw ecofeminism as reinforcing and growing patriarchal dominance and norms. Feminist thoughts surrounding ecofeminism grew in some areas as it was criticized, vegetarian ecofeminism contributed intersectional analysis, and ecofeminisms that analyzed animal rights, labor rights and activisms as they could draw lines among oppressed groups. To some, the inclusion of non-human animals also became to be viewed as essentialist. According to ecofeminist and author Charlene Spretnik, modern ecofeminism is concerned about a variety of issues, including reproductive technology, equal pay and equal rights, toxic poisoning, third world development, and more. Ecofeminism, as it propelled into the 21st century, became aware of the criticisms, and in response, ecofeminists with a materialist lens began doing research and renaming the topic, i.e., queer ecologies, global feminist environmental justice, and gender and the environment. Topic. Movements based on literature Beginning in the late 20th century, women worked in efforts to protect wildlife, food, air and water. These efforts depended largely on new developments in the environmental movement from influential writers, such as Henry David Thoreau, Aldo Leopold, John Muir, and Rachel Carson. Fundamental examples of women's efforts in the 20th century are the books Silent Spring by Rachel Carson and Refuge by Terry Tempest Williams. These works truly opened Americans' eyes to the environmental harm they were perpetuating, and created a platform for change. Ecofeminist author Karen Warren lists Aldo Leopold's essay, Land Ethic. 1949 as a fundamental work to the ecofeminist conception, as Leopold was the first to pen an ethic for the land which understands all non-human parts of that community animals, plants, land, air, water as equal to and in a relationship with humans. This inclusive understanding of the environment launched the modern preservation movement and illustrated how issues can be viewed through a framework of caring. Susan A. Mann, an eco feminist and professor of sociological and feminist theory, considers the roles women played in these activisms to be the starter for ecofeminism in later centuries. Mann associates the beginning of ecofeminism not with feminists but with women of different race and class backgrounds who made connections among gender, race, class, and environmental issues. This ideal is upheld through the notion that in activist and theory circles marginalized groups must be included in the discussion. In early environmental and women's movements, issues of varying races and classes were often separated. Topic. Major critiques The major criticism of ecofeminism is that it is essentialist. The ascribed essentialism appears in two main areas. 
Adherence to strict dichotomy between men and women. Some eco feminist critiques are that the dichotomy between women and men and nature and culture creates a dualism that is too stringent and focused in the difference of women and men. That ecofeminism too strongly correlates the social status of women with the social status of nature, rather than the non-essentialist view that women along with nature both have masculine and feminine qualities, and that just like feminine qualities have often been seen as less worthy, nature is also seen as having lesser value than culture, or the qualities involved in these concepts. Divergent view regarding participation in oppressive structures, as opposed to radical and liberation based feminist movements. Mainstream feminism, which is most tightly bound with hegemonic social status, strives to promote equality within the existing social and political structure, such as making it possible for women to occupy positions of power in business, industry, and politics, using direct involvement as the main tactic for achieving pay equity and influence. In contrast, many ecofeminists oppose active engagement in these areas, as these are the very structures that the movement intends to dismantle. Social ecologist and feminist Janet Beale has criticized ecofeminism for focusing too much on a mystical connection between women and nature and not enough on the actual conditions of women. She has also stated that rather than being a forward moving theory, ecofeminism is an anti progressive movement for women. Rosemary Radford Ruther also critiques this focus on mysticism over work that focuses on helping women, but argues that spirituality and activism can be combined effectively in ecofeminism. A. E. Kings has criticized ecofeminism for limiting itself to focusing only on gender and the environment, and neglecting to take an intersectional approach. Kings says that ecofeminists claim to be intersectional, however have fallen short on their commitment until recently. Theorists Judy Bari – Bari was a member of the Earth First – movement and says she was targeted due to her womanhood. Françoise Dobon – called upon women to lead an ecological revolution in order to save the planet. This entailed revolutionizing gender relations and human relations with the natural world. Greta Gard – Greta Gard is an American ecofeminist scholar and activist. Her major contributions to the field connect ideas of queer theory, vegetarianism, and animal liberation. Her major theories include ecocriticism which works to include literary criticism and composition to inform ecofeminism and other feminist theories to address wider range of social issues within ecofeminism. She is an ecological activist and leader in the U.S. Green Party, and the Green Movement. Sally McFaig, a prominent ecofeminist theologian, McFaig uses the metaphor of God's body to represent the universe at large. This metaphor values inclusive, mutualistic and interdependent relations amongst all things. Carolyn Merchant, historian of science who taught at Berkeley for many years. Her book The Death of Nature, Women, Ecology and the Scientific Revolution is a classic ecofeminist text. Mary Meller, UK sociologist who moved to ecofeminist ideas from an interest in cooperatives. Her books, Breaking the Boundaries and Feminism and Ecology are grounded in a materialist analysis. Maria Mies, Mies is a German social critic who has been involved in feminist work throughout Europe and India. She works particularly on the intersections of patriarchy, poverty, and the environment on a local and global scale. Val Plumwood, Val Plumwood, formerly Val Routley, was an Australian ecofeminist intellectual and activist, who was prominent in the development of radical ecosophy from the early 1970s through the remainder of the 20th century. In her works, Feminism and the Mastery of Nature. She describes the relationship of mankind and the environment relating to an eco-feminist ideology. Rosemary Radford Ruther, has written 36 books and over 600 articles exploring the intersections of feminism, theology, and creation care. Ariel Sala, Australian ecofeminist with a global perspective, a founding editor of the journal Capitalism Nature Socialism, author of two books and some 200 articles examining links with deep and social ecology, green politics and eco-socialism. Vandana Shiva, Shiva is a physicist, author, activist, feminist and philosopher from India. She was a participant in the Chipko movement of the 1970s, which used nonviolent activism to protest and prevent deforestation in the Garhwal Himalayas of Uttarakhand, India then in Uttar Pradesh. Charlene Spretnik – Spretnik is an American writer largely known for her writing on ecology, politics and spirituality. Through these writings Spretnik has become a prominent ecofeminist. 
She has written many books which discuss ecological issues in terms of effects with social criticisms, including feminism. Spretnik works had a major influence in the development of the Green Party. She has also won awards based on her visions on ecology and social issues as well as feminist thinking. Starhawk, an American writer and activist Starhawk is known for her work in spiritualism and ecofeminism. She advocates for social justice in issues surrounding nature and spirit. These social justice issues fall under the scope of feminism and ecofeminism. She believes in fighting oppression through intersectionality and the importance of spirituality, eco-consciousness and sexual and gender liberation. Douglas Vakoch, an American ecocritic whose edited volumes include Ecofeminism and Rhetoric, Critical Perspectives on Sex, Technology, and Discourse 2011, Feminist Ecocriticism, Environment, Women, and Literature 2012, and with Sam Mickey Ecofeminism in Dialogue 2018, Literature and Ecofeminism, Intersectional and International Voices 2018, and Women and Nature, Beyond Dualism in Gender, Body, and Environment 2018. Karen Warren, received her B.A. in philosophy from the University of Minnesota 1970 and her Ph.D. from the University of Massachusetts Amherst in 1978. Before her long tenure at McAllister College, which began in 1985, Warren was professor of philosophy at St. Olaf College in the early 1980s. Warren was the ecofeminist scholar-in-residence at Murdoch University in Australia. In 2003, she served as an Oxford University Round Table Scholar and as Women's Chair in Humanistic Studies at Marquette University in 2004. She has spoken widely on environmental issues, feminism, critical thinking skills and peace studies in many international locations including Buenos Aires, Gothenburg, Helsinki, Oslo, Manitoba, Melbourne, Moscow, Perth, the UN Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro 1992, and San Jose. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading topic Key works Ancient Futures, Learning from Ladakh, by Helena Norberg Hodge The Body of God by Sally McFaig The Chalice and the Blade, Our History, Our Future, by Rianne Eisler The Death of Nature, Women, Ecology, and the Scientific Revolution by Carolyn Merchant Ecofeminism by Maria Mize and Vandana Shiva Ecofeminism in Latin America by Mary Judith Ross Ecofeminist Philosophy by Karen J. Warren Environmental Culture by Val Plumwood Feminism and the Mastery of Nature, by Val Plumwood Gaia and God, An Ecofeminist Theology of Earth Healing, by Rosemary Radford Ruther Integrating Ecofeminism, Globalization, and World Religions, by Rosemary Radford Ruther Neither Man Nor Beast by Carol J. Adams Refuge, An Unnatural History of Family and Place by Terry Tempest Williams The Resurgence of the Real, Body, Nature, and Place in a Hypermodern World by Charlene Spretnik Sacred Longings, Ecofeminist Theology and Globalization by Mary Gray The Sexual Politics of Meat by Carol J. Adams Silent Spring by Rachel Carson The Spiral Dance by Starhawk Staying Alive, Women, Ecology and Development by Vandana Shiva Thinking Green. Essays on Environmentalism, Feminism, and Nonviolence, by Petra Kelly Tomorrow's Biodiversity by Vandana Shiva Woman and Nature, The Roaring Inside Her, by Susan Griffin Breaking the Boundaries, by Mary Meller Ecofeminism as Politics, Nature, Marx, and the Postmodern, by Ariel Sala Topic Anthologies Animals and Women, Feminist Theoretical Explorations, edited by Carol J. Adams and Josephine Donovan Ecofeminism, Women, Animals, Nature, edited by Greta Gard Ecofeminism, Women, Culture, Nature, Nature, edited by Karen J. Warren with editorial assistance from Nisvan Arkal Ecofeminism and Globalization, Exploring Culture, Context and Religion, edited by Heather Eaton and Lois Ann Lawrence and Ecofeminism and Rhetoric, Critical Perspectives on Sex, Technology, and Discourse, edited by Douglas A. Vakoch Ecofeminism and the Sacred, edited by Carol J. Adams Ecofeminism in Dialogue, edited by Douglas A. Vakoch and Sam Mickey Feminist Ecocriticism, Environment, Women, and Literature, edited by Doug Douglas A. Vakoch Literature and Ecofeminism, Intersectional and International Voices, edited by Douglas A. Vakoch and Sam Mickey The Politics of Women's Spirituality, Essays on the Rise of Spiritual Power Within the Feminist Movement, edited by Charlene Spretnik Readings in Ecology and Feminist Theology, edited by Mary Heather McKinnon and Moni McIntyre Reclaim the Earth, edited by Leonie Caldicott and Stephanie Leland Reweaving the World, The Emergence of Ecofeminism, edited by Irene Diamond and Gloria Feeman Orenstein Women and Nature, Beyond Dualism in Gender, Body, and Environment, edited by Douglas A. 
Vakoch and Sam Mickey Women Healing Earth, Third World Women on Ecology, Feminism, and Religion, edited by Rosemary Radford Ruther Topic Journal articles Gard, Greta Clare 2011. Ecofeminism Revisited, Rejecting Essentialism and Replacing Species in a Material Feminist Environmentalism. Feminist Formations, 23 26–53. 10 10.1353, Huggin, Graham Greening Postcolonialism, Ecocritical Perspectives. MFS Modern Fiction Studies. 53, 701–733. Doi 10.1353 MFS.2004.0067. Mac Canty, Colleen. 2004. Third Wave Feminism and the Need to Reweave the Nature Culture Duality. NWSA Journal, 16, 154 179. Doi 10.1353 NWSA.2004.0077. McGregor, Sherilyn. 2004. From Care to Citizenship, Calling Ecofeminism Back to Politics. Ethics and the Environment, 9, 56-84. doi, 10.1353, en.2004.0007. Mallory, Chiwan, 2013. Locating Ecofeminism in Encounters with Food and Place. Journal of Agricultural and Environmental Ethics, 26, 171-189. DOI 10.1007 per seconds 10806 11 9373 8. Mann, Susan A. 2011. Pioneers of U.S. Ecofeminism and Environmental Justice, Feminist Formations, 23, 2, 1 25. Wilde, Jade. 2012. The Artistic Progressions of Ecofeminism The Changing Focus of Women in Environmental Art. International Journal of the Arts in Society, 6 1, 53-65. doi, 10.18848-1833-1866, CGP, V06I01, 35978. Topic Fiction, Clementa, by Jim Martin A. Door into Ocean by Joan Slonczewski Always Coming Home by Ursula K. Le Guin Buffalo Gals, Won't You Come Out Tonight by Ursula K. Le Guin The Fifth Sacred Thing by Starhawk The Gate to Women's Country by Sherry S. Tepper The Wholefast Chronicles by Susie McKee Charnas Native Tongue by Suzette Hayden Elgin The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler Prodigal Summer by Barbara Kingsolver Surfacing by Margaret Atwood. The Wanderground by Sally Miller Gearhart. Woman on the Edge of Time by Marge Piercy. The Kin of Ada Are Waiting for You by Dorothy Bryant. Bear by Marion Engel. The Temple of My Familiar by Alice Walker. A Bengali play, Nilkanta Dash, 2010, by Supratim Roy. Sultana's Dream, 1905, by Begum Rokia Sakawad Hossein. Topic. Poetry The Sea of Affliction 1987, reprinted 2010 by Rosemary Rowley Topic. External links Ecofeminism, Toward Global Justice and Planetary Health Feminist Greta Gard and Lori Gruen's Ecofeminist Framework Ecofem.org includes the regularly updated Ecofeminism Bibliography Ecofeminism.net An Ecology of Knowledge, Feminism, Ecology and the Science and Religion Discourse. Metanexus Institute by Lisa Stenmark. Ecofeminism and the Democracy of Creation. By Catherine Keller 2005, cf. Carol P. Christ. Ecofeminism. In Michelle Weber and Will Desmond, eds. Handbook of Whiteheadian Process Thought, Frankfurt, Lancaster, Antos Verlag, 2008, pp. 87 to 98. Toward a Queer Ecofeminism, by Greta Gard.